Okay, well happy Thursday to you all. Getting out for a late work commute today. I've been uh, working from home most of the morning. Doing various things, billing and uh, trying to catch up on emails and all kinds of late work, missed work. Uh, Got to run over to uh, Best Buy, pick up a hard drive for a customer of mine. Uh, external backup drive because they have a uh, failing drive array, <laughs> which is not a good thing. Uh, need to uh, get a good external backup of their system, so I've got a recovery point if this uh, drive array just takes a dirt nap, which is very possible. Uh, their server closet has been too hot and uh, cooking components, so that's not good. you got multiple issues we have to address there. So, uh, anywho, I've got to get this drive hooked up uh, so I can schedule a full backup of their system. And it's, uh, it's a big backup, 12 and a half terabytes. So I need to get everything off of that system before the drive array goes bye-bye. And uh, it'll take all weekend, I'm sure. So I'm going to be out of town this weekend on the uh, camping outing, moto camping with uh, Neil and uh, Adrian. So I'm not sure... Uh, if I'll be able to babysit that or not, but I'll definitely kick it off and look in on it once or twice and see if uh, it needs my attention, but otherwise uh, that'll give me a good starting point for next week. Need to order some more drives for that failing array. That <laughs> for any of you technical folk out there, it is uh, a Dell MD1200 uh, external array hooked up to, a, I believe it's a Perk 730 controller I can't remember what the controller is but uh, it's a 12 drive array uh, all two terabyte drives and uh, it's running in RAID 60 and it's lost four drives or it's got four drives pending failure flashing orange uh, that's that's the tipping point right there <laughs> you could lose two out of each stripe and we've lost two so that means we're running in parity recovery right now that's not good so we gotta get those drives uh, hot footed out from uh, server supply or somebody I don't know who I'll find some. And a scoot went by ahead of me there. It looked like a Bergy 400. It might have been a 200. I don't know. It's a smaller one. Suzuki Bergman. Let's see if I can catch up to him see what it is. Yamaha Majesty. I don't know. No, it looks like a Bergman exhaust. Yeah, that's a Bergy. I think. No, oh, that is a Majesty. Look at that. Yamaha Majesty. And of course, that truck was tailgating him within about three feet. What a complete tool. Yamaha Majesty. That's a good scoot. It's a 400cc class. I I want to say they were 379cc or something like that. Uh, I never did own one, but I've ridden one several times. I like them. If I could ever find a good deal on one, I'd probably pick one up. They're not extremely fuel efficient. None of the Yamahas ever seem to be all that efficient. Not as much so as the Hondas. Uh, but they do pretty good. I, I think they are getting somewhere in the high 70 mile per gallon range at uh, freeway speeds. 65-ish. They do okay. I've been looking at uh, all the European releases for the Honda ADV 350 and uh, there seems to be some confusion on the pricing. Uh, I've seen Motorcycle.com and a couple of other uh, magazine shops, uh, you know, motorcycle reviewers, whatnot, saying that uh, the ADV 350 is going to be like the equivalent of $14,000 US. No, no, that's a misprint. They're reading their specs wrong and they should, uh, uh, they should update their articles because the ADV 750, X ADV 750, that is 14000 and change. Uh, MSRP on the uh, ADV 350 is, uh, hey, a monkey, all right. 
Uh, lots of bikes out today. Weather's fantastic. Uh, I think it's $55.99 or $56.99 British pounds. So convert that up and that's $63, $6,400 US. So I'm guessing if and when we ever do get the announcement here for the USA release on the ADV 350, it'll probably be in the $6,500 range. It'd be great if it was closer to six, but not likely. Uh, they're probably going to price it very close to uh, the Yamaha uh, X Max 300, uh, and that thing is, you know, pretty much six thousand bucks. So it'll probably be in that neighborhood, which is okay. A couple thousand dollars more than the ADV 150. I can understand that. So I didn't give my uh, obligatory weather report as I left the house. Uh, it is fantastic here today. We're headed for a high of near 80. I believe it's uh, 76 right now, 75, 76 degrees. And uh, we're gonna have pretty good weather for the next few days. Uh, I think we've got like a 15% chance or 20% chance of some rain on Saturday. Uh, and into Sunday it increases to 30% or more. Uh, so very likely we're going to be riding back in the rain from uh, Page, Texas. From the Cotton Bowl Speedway. We're planning to get out tomorrow morning. Leave, I don't know early-ish, you know, probably uh, nine or something like that. It'll take us uh, two or three hours to get up there to Page, Texas and meet up with Neil. <clears throat> I'm going to squeeze it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think I'll be taking the Super Cub, but I, I don't know. I, I'm undecided. I haven't 100% made up my mind whether I'm going to do the uh, uh, Navi or the Super Cub. I don't know. I can't decide. If I can figure out routes to keep me off of 290, I'll take the Navi. But it looks like really the only way up that direction is going to be uh, 290. <laughs> That's how it always works. You know, we can we can meander surface streets uh, here, there, and everywhere, but it always ends up dumping us onto 71 or 290 somehow. And I don't know that there's any other routes through there besides that. this guy. Of course he's leaving, so. Ugh. Got it. All right, I'm going to grab my stuff and uh, head out. Got to go all the way to the downtown area. tags in here now. Uh, E-paper, that's pretty slick. Get in there, I know you fit. I've done this before. Oh, there it goes. Get in there. Uh, 
Alrighty then. I still haven't gotten into this thing. I need to put the original bars back on here. Take off these Kijima bars. Kijima, Kijima, I don't know how you say it. Uh, put the original bars back on and uh, redo my wiring because my uh, USBs are dead. Uh, put my RAM mount, or my uh, quad lock mount back up there. The RAM balls. Hello? There we go. I've noticed that every now and then when I turn this key, it doesn't go all the way. I've got to kind of jiggle the key and redo it, and then it turns on. Strange. Okay, it's hot. I don't want to sit here any longer than necessary. Let's go. Yep, sitting still. It's uh, 80 plus out here. Mount Kilimanjaro here. Ugh. I was watching uh, Birch's channel, Life of Birch, and he installed the Burley brand shocks. Uh, I think of the Burley Stilettos on the back of his Rebel, and he says they are just fantastic. So I'm going to have to investigate those uh, this spring when I can get into my bike projects again sometime over the next couple months. Uh, I'm going to be hitting up uh, Olin's again to see if they're going to have a fitment for the Rebel 1100. I would hope they, they will, but if they don't, I'm going to look into uh, Burley and a couple of other brands to see if I can find some better rear shocks for this thing. And uh, a couple of other little minor upgrades. If, uh, if Olin's comes out with theirs, I'm going to see if they'll do the front forks as well. Uh, their fork cartridge uh, replacements. So should drastically improve the handling of this bike. I was kind of tentatively waiting to see if Honda was going to announce the NT 1100 arrival date here in the United States because I may, not for sure, I may uh, replace the Rebel with the NT 1100. Uh, it's the same engine, probably going to be more in the Africa Twins uh, performance trim, though, a little closer to 100 horsepower. So. I don't know. I like the Rebel. I've got nothing against it. Uh, I really enjoy it. But I think if I had the uh, standard, you know, touring chassis, uh, it would be this and more. So I don't know if I would ride this one all that much after that. Pages run 100. Welcome to the Houston Autobahn. I'll do it for short stints to get out of the way or get past somebody that's just being an intentional tool, you know, trying to block and bracket a lane. But sustained speeds of 100 on the highway right here? Come on, really? It's 
a nice little tussle. Kind of black there. Man, looking at this little mini convertible in front of me reminds me uh, during the Cannonball last July, uh, Adrian and I were in the middle of nowhere. I think it was uh, day seven. Yeah, day seven. Uh, I can't remember where we were exactly, but uh, there was a little Mazda Speed uh, Miata that went by us and. Uh, reminded me I want another convertible. I had a Mazda Miata a while back, early 2000s model. Great little car. It wasn't super quick or fast or anything. Uh, it just had really good balance. It's a go-kart. Really fun to throw around. And uh, seeing the convertibles, it's like, yeah, I need another sports car. So I don't know what I'm going to do with my Accord, but we'll see. Nobody uses my Accord much. I don't drive it much. I've had it for two years now, and it barely has 13,000 miles on it. Might be right at 14. It just clicked over to 13 or 14,000. I put more than that on my bikes. 10,000 miles on my cab in one month. Just spend more time on two wheels. Or let me rephrase: out in the open air, <laughs> not in a cage. I want to be in a cage? At least want it to be topless. So when I get back to the house today, after this uh, run, I gotta go all the way into the downtown area, then come back, stop at my warehouse over here, uh, shuffle a couple things real quick, and then head back. So when I return home, I need to get all my camping gear together and prep the cup for a road trip. Shouldn't take more than half an hour to grab all my stuff and be ready to go, I hope. I haven't been out in many months. I don't think I've got my uh, go bags ready. I'll need to take a tent because there are no trees. So that alters my loadout a little bit. If I take the Navi, then it's yet another exercise. I've got to figure out what fits, where I can strap it all down. And I need a fuel bottle or an extra fuel container or something. Because it's, uh, it's going to be very possible to go 65 miles between fuel stations out in Oregon and we'd stop every 30 miles or something, but that's going to be silly. There's my spot, and it's on gravel, of course, which I hate in this bike. Okay, well, if my battery's still running, then uh, I will catch up with you guys in just a little bit. Okay, we're zooming from uh, my warehouse now. Got a couple stops done, several things handled, and now it's uh, heading back out to uh, Katy before traffic gets crazy. And I need to stop and put fuel in this thing because it's flashing. And I got my 55-55 mile marker <laughs> right here at my office. Nice. All right, uh, off we go. little car. How you doing, dude? Getting the sneaking suspicion this guy doesn't belong here. He's uh, shopping. parking lot a couple times yeah uh -huh. yeah he didn't belong here he's shopping he went around the parking lot over there a couple times just looking at stuff and now he's rolling by real slow looking at other stuff yeah. up to no good
decide where I'll stop for fuel. Might, uh, might go to Costco. I haven't been there in a while. I don't think it's any cheaper than anywhere else. Just uh, a convenient stop on the way through, I think it is. Stop and pick up a shawarma for me, man. Chicken shawarma sounds really good. Oh, hell no. Look at these lines. I've never understood why the Costco gas lines are so long. It's not that great of fuel. Come on. There's plenty of places to fill up for one or two pennies different. Skip that. I will find another fueling station. Ah, screw it. I'm going to try to ride it home. My range says 27 miles. It's only uh, 16 to home, so let's see if we... Uh, trust it and make it. <laughs> Don't want to end up pushing this one. It's a little heavy. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with stopping around here. We'll just uh, go down the road a piece. Does anyone want food from Fadi's? Question mark. Okay, so I made it to uh, Fadi's uh, Mediterranean Grill. Still had 16 miles left on the uh, range meter there, so I'm going to pick up my food and pick up gas and go home. Okay, mission accomplished. Sandwich in hand. Took him forever, 15 minutes, but that's okay. Now it's off to pick up some fuel and uh, home. Eat my sandwich. I suppose I could pick up fuel after I eat my sandwich. That's a better idea. I'm going to eat the sandwich while it's hot. I need to get home because I'm expecting a DHL delivery that might show up any time now. And I've been getting all these uh, DHL uh, text messages and emails, and they're fraud uh, every time. I don't trust them, so I never respond to them, and it's for the signature list delivery, all that, so I don't know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to give the bad guys a chance to get in my pockets, so I didn't want to do the signature release stuff in case it was fraud, so that means somebody needs to be there at home to sign for the package, and I guess that's going to be me. It's a little wide to squeak through there, but I might be able to make it. Fold my mirror in. Try not to drag my foot pegs. There we go, made it. Folding uh, hindsight mirrors are quite nice sometimes. And I just got a text. I heard my phone beep. I'll bet that was my wife or one of the kids saying, yeah, I want something from Fadi's. Yeah, you're 15 minutes late. I'm 
coming home to eat my sandwich. I'll go back out for them later. <laughs> I sent him a text when I was standing there in front of the place. said, does anyone want anything from Fadi's? Crickets. Nothing. Until I leave. And then they pipe up. Oh, yeah, I want some. That's how it usually works. Okay, well, home again, home again, and I'm going to eat my sandwich. And then see if somebody else was deciding they wanted something at the last second. <laughs> I'm going to go back out for them, but I'm eating first. I'm hungry. So I will catch you all uh, later, maybe uh, for another ride on one of the other bikes uh, to go out for another food run. Catch you later.